Sandra, welcome to another episode of Asexualized, My Asexual Life. This is a place to be for education about asexuality, all things asexual. I share my own asexual life journey in order to help you in yours. If you haven't already subscribed, please hit the great big subscribe button below right here, right now. Please hit that bell icon so you get notified of every time I go live right now or post a new video. And don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you're enjoying the content at all as we go along. If you find it useful, helpful, insightful in any way, shape or form, entertaining, or you just want to give this channel some like love. It really, really, really does help to support this channel. And I feel eternally blessed for every one of you who does in fact give these videos a thumbs up. Lots of love to you. If you don't know who I am, I am Sandra Bellamy, author of this beautiful book, Asexual Perspectives. 47 asexual stories, love, life, and sex, a celebration of asexual diversity. I'm also the founder of asexualized.com, the founder of Asexualized Academy. Welcome to tonight's episode. Something that crops up quite a lot in asexual groups, particularly on Facebook, is um, often questions from aromantic asexuals, those that lack romantic attraction as well as lacking sexual attraction. Some aromantics really want to know what it feels like to feel romantic attraction because they really, really don't understand that. It's not something that comes normal. It's not something that's normal to them. It's not something that comes naturally to them. It's something that's not really a part of who they are. You know, they don't experience romantic attraction, but there's some aromantic asexuals that really desperately would like to try it, would like to feel it, would like to understand it more and know what it does feel like. And so this video is particularly with those people in mind, those who don't really get romantic attraction. They don't really understand it. And also some people don't really understand aesthetic attraction. But I think aesthetic attraction is much more widely understood than romantic attraction, to be honest with you. And so I wanted to just share with you something that happened today and how I was aesthetically and romantically attracted to this person straight away. Hi, Ray. Sorry, my voice is croaking tonight. I need to drink more water, I think. <clears throat> I had a busy day and I've been drinking as much, so my throat's really kind of like going off and on. So anyway, um, I'll do the video. I'll probably make it shorter than usual. I hope your date went well, by the way, because I know you have a date. So I hope it went well or still going good. Anyway, so yes, um, what does it feel like? So basically, this is a situation that happened today. I was an ace app. Ace app is an asexual dating app for asexuals and um basically you can download it it looks like a little cake symbol uh with the asexual colors purple uh gray white black in a certain order on a cake and you can download the app for um she just left oh bless you that was good timing then wasn't it <laughs> i didn't do that on purpose um did you tell her i've got to watch sandra sorry You've got to go. I've got to watch Sandra. <laughs> um, and so anyway, um, I digress. So I thought I'd, yeah, so ASAP, yeah, you can download it for Android or iPhone. And uh, they used to specifically put on there it was a dating app when it first came out. But now they're like a social networking app for asexuals. But it's predominantly always been known as a dating app before then. And you can put where you're looking for chat, friendship or relationship. And obviously, if you're looking for a relationship on there, it's pretty obvious that you are looking for a relationship or you. So you would think. But I think some people, they just shove relationship on the end of their kind of like hoping maybe a relationship will come along. But they're not really that suitable for it. Do you know what I mean? You know, like they're not really wanting it. It's just a case I'll shove relationship on there. Oh, it went very well. She said she wants to see me again. Good for you, Ray. Oh, that's so good. I'm really, really pleased. Yes, you're a good guy to get on with. So she should think that. It's good. So going back to this video, thank you, Ray. So it just proves that dating for asexuals can go very, very well because Ray's asexual. So this gives us all hope. Right. So I get some message today, which I wasn't expecting, from a guy in the UK who's 21. Right. Now, you know, I like younger foreign guys. Now, this guy does look foreign, even though he might be British born because he's got like a foreign look about him, right? I'm not quite sure if it's Italian, maybe a little bit of Indian, but American Indian. Who knows? Anyway, he looks a little bit foreign, but 
he might be British born, but have some foreign ethnicity in him. Do you know what I mean? Anyway, to cut a long story short, he's 21 and he approached me because, you know, I like younger guys. And so um, and so he uh, messaged me and clearly he li- must like older girls because of the way he um, spoke. He said, hello, Sandra, you sound like my ideal lady. Now, the word lady is quite an old term. I prefer to be called girl, to be quite honest with you. I even prefer to be called girl than woman a lot of the time. But girl first, woman second, lady is quite old to me. But anyway, I think he meant it in a nice way because he says in his profile that um, he's a gent, which means, you know, which kind of is an old fashioned term as well. So I tend to attract guys that usually if they're young, like in their early 20s, have got an old soul. So I think he's got an older soul, which obviously would go well with a younger girl like me, do you know what I mean? Who's older in birth certificate age, but younger in soul and core being. I would go well with someone probably who's younger in birth certificate age, but got an older soul. So we even each other out. Does that make sense? And it balances. So only because uh, I noticed he, word, uh, he used the word gent in his profile so that's a very old-fashioned term so he says hello Sandra you sound like my ideal lady with a kiss like a smiley face with kiss it's just a shame that you live far away although Exeter's not a bad place so am I visiting so to me that means he really likes me and even though I live far away he can still like coming to see me so me being me as you know don't do anything by halves and usually <laughs> When most people write a couple of sentences, I like write a whole like chapter and verse because I am a writer after all. Anyway, so this was my very not short reply. Good morning. I'm not going to mention their name. Nice to hear from you. And thank you for being so upfront, honest and open. I like a guy who says exactly how he thinks and feels and tells it like it is. I like your face and the fact you are creative too. Most asexuals have to either travel or move for a suitable relationship uh, or find someone willing to do that. I love living in my flat here and it's only suitable for one person. I enjoy living on my own, but would eventually like my right, my, the right guy. I was going to say my guy, but then I changed it to my, the right guy. It should have been the right guy to move to live near me. I read your profile and it's nice and I can see why you think we might be suitable. Apart from I can't be with a smoker. Yes, he smokes. Not even an occasional one as it's bad for my chest because I adore kissing, although not the sex. I kissed a smoker last year and got a chest infection for seven weeks. So it's not just me saying I can't be with a smoker and being harsh. It's telling the damn truth because it really affects my health and I'm not going to be with someone who affects my health. I just can't do it. I love myself too much for that. Do you know what I mean? Um, If you wanted to visit Exeter and see how we got on, which I know we would, you could either come to my meet uh, next, come to my next asexual meetup, which is next Sunday, the 15th of December, when this is going live, at George's Meeting House in South Street, Exeter for 1pm for food. Uh, I've just told the whole world now where the meat is. <laughs> Tring and chat. One of my best friends is getting to Exeter earlier, 11 a.m. So I am meeting them before the actual meetup. So could also meet you earlier too if you arrived earlier. Uh, or connect with me on Facebook and we can video chat first to see how we get on. And then arrange to meet in person one on one in a public place. I won't meet any guy on my own who I haven't video chatted with first. And then I've given my Facebook personal profile. And then I put another message, very short. I'm curious to know if you were originally born in the UK as you look foreign, question mark. Now, this person hasn't got back to me. And they, they, they messaged me at like one something in the morning. So they messaged at 1.54 a.m. And I replied to them at, 10.52 10.52 and 10.58 a.m. So, I mean, that's a long time, but they, their profession is waiter. So, I mean, obviously, that's quite long hours if you're waiting on tables all day. Um, But, you know what I mean? If someone's really keen on you, I usually expect them, and really likes you, I usually expect them to check in, like, do you know what I mean, in the same day to see if they've got a reply. 
And I think that's a that's a problem with a lot of asexuals. They say they're looking for a relationship, but they're not that committed to actually getting a relationship. Like it can be days or weeks or months. <laughs> I've had it even months before they reply to a message. Oh, I'm sorry I haven't replied yet. Like five, well, maybe five weeks later, so a month and a bit. You know what I mean? I think I have actually had people like reply months later. Uh, Ray, if I was interested in someone, I'd text back immediately, even off only for a second. I know, Ray, you're so good like that. You're a very good guy like that, I have to say. Do you know what I mean? And it's like, you know, if someone says, oh, I, you know, you sound like an ideal person, and then they're not even bothering to check their messages or reply. You know, they could have looked at their message on lunch break and stuff like that. Do you see what I'm saying? It doesn't bode very well. But when I when I actually looked at them, because this video is all about what does it feel like to experience instant aesthetic and romantic attraction, I was going to talk through how I felt the, Im immediately when I'd had this message, how I felt, because obviously I checked the profile out, checked the look of the person out, and how I feel. Now, because I'm a hyper-romantic, I kind of get romantic feelings uber quickly for someone, if I'm going to get romantic feelings for them. Like, it's almost instantaneously, pretty much. And so I would just wanted to share with you what that felt like, because I know some asexuals, they really don't understand romantic attraction and they don't get what it feels like. So in terms of like aesthetic attraction, um, I was like thinking, wow, this guy has a beautiful face. His eyes are so stunningly beautiful. His nose is really cute and his lips are sweet and his whole face is very beautiful. He reminds me of someone actually out of one out of a, like a movie, like a like um, you know, like the prince and princess type. He reminds me of a prince. Um, he reminds me. I know who he reminds me of. Um, oh, what is it? Uh, the Lost Pearl. What is that film? Uh, with Johnny Depp and there's another guy in it. Oh, what is it called? You. Oh man, I can't remember what the film's called now. You know the film with Johnny Depp in it called the and it's got it, one of the films is called The Black Pearl. Help me out here, please, people. You must know what I'm talking about. Um, they're on a ship. Oh, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to Google. I'm gonna have to like uh, look it up on I to see what it is called because <laughs> you your neck forthcoming. But he reminds me of the guy in this movie. Um, right. Let me find out what it's called because it's on the tip of my tongue and I can't remember. Oh, it's not got it here. I'm trying to look it up because I'm trying to tell you who this guy looks like. Right. Pirates of the Caribbean. Got it. Right. Oh, Ray, yes, fine. You've told me now. And Heather. Yeah, Pirates of the Caribbean. Right. In Pirates of the Caribbean... There is a guy in there, and this guy reminds me a bit of the guy in these movies. The one that's got the long hair that likes the young girl. Um, I'm, I don't know if I can find um, actually the cast of it, the black belt, pin peel. Let me see if I can find the cast to explain who he looks a bit like. Um... He doesn't look like Johnny Depp. He looks a bit like the other one. Oh, Orlando Bloom, isn't it? But or, but in the movie, yes. Orlando Bloom. He looks a bit like Orlando Bloom. A little bit, but his nose is different. But he reminds me a little bit of uh, Orlando Bloom. Yes. In Pirates of the Caribbean. That's what I was trying to say. I told you it's the Pirates of the Caribbean. Yeah. But I'd already tried to look it up then, Ray, and I couldn't see what you'd written. Because I had my Google screen over but after you'd already put that, but I couldn't see that because I'd already gone to Google before you told me. Uh, anyway, it was good because I couldn't remember the guy's actual name as well because I was trying to think of the guy's name, not just the Pirates of the Caribbean. So, yeah, Orlando Bloom. He reminds me a little bit of Orlando Bloom, which I think Orlando Bloom's quite good looking. So he reminds me of him. He reminds me a bit like, um, you know, Frozen. Frozen 2's out. I can't wait to see it. I haven't gone to see it yet. So you know that kind of like era when they like, you know, all the swashbuckling era when they have long hair. Because he looks like he's got long hair tied back in a ponytail. I don't know if he has or if he's just got long, like longer hair coming here. 
and down, and you know, and that's just the way he looks. But he looks like he might have long hair tied back in a ponytail. I'm not sure. But he got long hairy side. But he just looks like he reminds me of Orlando Bloom or someone out of like a swashbuckling movie, you know, where they got doing sword fights or that type of era. Do you know what I mean? He could easily be, I think, in a movie or on stage or in a film. He's very good looking. <laughs> like when I looked at him, I'm like, oh yeah. When I when I look at him close, like when I look at him far away, it's like mm, not so good looking. But when you actually zoom in on his picture, like, oh you're really aesthetically gorgeous. Like your eyes, his eyes are so peacefully, stunningly beautiful. They're beautiful brown colour. Um, you forgot I got 3,000 movies in my house. Yes, Ray. I Yeah, but you were being too slow. I said, what is it? Help me. And you were too slow. <laughs> Need to pump those reflexes and get in the quick dialing thing quicker. Do you know what I mean? Get those keyboards tapping quicker for me. Um, but yeah, but it's a good job that I said, a uh, good job I found it anyway, because I couldn't remember the actual character's name, which is the guy who plays the character, Orlando Bloom. Yeah. So when I look at him, I think he just reminds me of like out of an old fashioned movie, but like the kind of guy who plays the prince, who gets the princess, the good guy, prince. Do you know what I mean? And you know, I'm like, I love like, being a Disney princess so I get really attracted to him so I'm trying to explain to you in this video what the instant aesthetic attraction is like for me and why I'm aesthetically attracted to him because this is what the whole video is about I'm trying to explain for people who don't understand aesthetic attraction or don't understand romantic attraction what it feels like so when I like when you see him like not close up he doesn't look as good looking but when you zoom in on his picture, he looks really stunningly beautiful. He just looks like something out of a movie, you know? And he does remind me of Orlando Bloom, our Pirates of the Caribbean. And he also reminds me of some other people, like um, like I said, Frozen. He kind of reminds me of Frozen, but probably he reminds me of not the guy who's not so good in Frozen. <laughs> Whereas obviously the other guy's nice with the with the blondie hair isn't it but or he reminds me of like a musketeer out of the three musketeers i could honestly see him in a film for the three musketeers he'd probably be d'artagnan i think so um yeah i think he's probably d'artagnan so he reminds me i honestly think he should be an actor i just look at him and think you should be an actor acting in movies because he's that good looking and i could just see him in one of those situations where he was like um he was like uh having a sword fight or he was saving a woman from and rescuing her and quickly putting her up on a horse so when you when you uh experience romantic attraction as well as aesthetic attraction together the romantic side of you kind of like thinks up things in your head about it romanticizes a person so it kind of blows the whole proportion of the person I'm like, I've just met this guy I don't know if he's a nice guy or not do I but in my romanticism in my fact I feel romantic I will be you know thinking oh he's like this and the other I'll be putting him on a pedestal a bit not it, it's not a good idea to put someone on a pedestal don't get me wrong but I'm telling you how it feels and how it actually is not how how I wished it would be and how it should be because how healthier for me but how I actually feel right and that is you know it, it, it creates romantic feelings like when I see him one because he messaged me and said I was his ideal lady that instantly made me attracted to him because when someone says like you're 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 the ideal type of person for them even though you don't know them it like I know some guys like it really puts me off it's, it's a highly sexual guy but if it's an asexual guy because I am asexual it kind of draws me closer to them immediately because it's like saying oh, oh I really like you you're ideal so because he's used the word ideal language is quite quite a lot quite influential in romance do you know what I mean? Like, obviously, I'm talking about romance here. So it's quite influential, the the language. But actions speak louder than words. So the fact that this guy hasn't even checked his whole messages all day is not very good. It's not an action that would mean that if I am his ideal lady, truly and honestly, that he would be messaging me back and checking his phone and checking my message. I hasn't even seen the message reply from me. And I do know this app can play up sometimes though. So he might not have got any notifications come through because I know sometimes I don't get any notifications come through 
on the on the phone side uh, against the app, but someone has actually messaged me in the app. So unless he actually physically goes into the app, he might not see my message because I've done that. I did that today. There was a, uh, another message for me and it never showed that it was on there. I had to go into the app. So it might not be him. It might just be that he he hasn't gone into the app and it's not given a notification of a message. So, you know, just because he hasn't messaged back or seen it, because he hasn't seen the message, it would mean that he hasn't been in the app. So therefore, you know, like I said, it might be a bit, because this is very dodgy sometimes, this, this app in terms of like working properly. Sometimes I get internet error all the time in it as well. Um, I've had problems where I found it very difficult to speak to a person at one point. I had to literally message and say, do you want to connect on Facebook? Because I can't, I, like, I can't even get into the app some of the time. So it might not be a situation where he's not seen my message, you know, seen a notification and not bothered. It might be that he hasn't got a notification come up. So anyway, so the instant attraction was there. And I was, you know, like when I, I'm, I went on him, I'm like, he does look, foreign as well he's got a foreign look about him which you know i like and love so that makes me more attracted to him and, and obviously going back to the wording when he said you're my ideal lady one is ideal is is a very attractive word because it's saying i like you for who you are you look you fit great and secondly is he's used the word lady now lady i don't actually like the word lady because to me it's a, like an old lady an old woman right but in the context of a 21 year old using that word it usually means I like older women because they call older women ladies usually because they like respect older women. They want a relationship with older women. They speak more gentlemanly to him because he said he's a gent. So that's the language he uses. So that's what I mean. I can see him in an old fashioned film, <laughs> to be quite honest, like where the, where the, you know, the women were all wearing like really long dresses and I don't know, like feather hats or something. I, you know, like Ascot type stuff. I don't know if you know in the UK, there's like a horse racing thing going on at Ascot and they wear big hats, that type of era. Do you know what I mean? But if you think of the Three Musketeers um, or, you know, Pirates of the Caribbean, that type of clothing, I can just see him in that. I just picture him in that. And of course, when you're feeling romantic attraction, you kind of think things in your head that are not actually reality. And you kind of, I don't like using the word fantasize because I don't think anything about fantasy, but I can imagine, I like using the word, I can imagine, I imagine all different scenarios, right? And as when you experience romantic attraction, you imagine different scenarios. You imagine what would it be like if you were with that person, even though you've just met them. Like, and in terms of romance, um, Obviously, he did say, oh, but Exeter, like, basically nice place to visit. I wouldn't mind visiting. So he's basically giving me a hand saying, I want to come and see you. Very upfront, very blunt, very, like, I'm telling you like it is. And I find that very attractive. It's a guy who's putting himself forward, who's saying it like it is. And it's very attractive to me because it's like, yeah, you, you get all these guys that are not saying anything. They're just on the app going, chatting away. And it's like, are you looking for a relationship or friendship on this app? And some of them don't even know. Like one of them just joined it because they thought, oh, I'll check out to see if there's an asexual dating app. And they just joined it, even though they got chat, friendship and relationship. Like, I don't really know why I'm on it. So, do you know what I'm saying? It can be very like that, you know, but that's obviously, I found these, this is what I found attractive about his words. I found his face really attractive, like it's very kissable. I could see me holding hands with this guy. And that's, again, romantic attraction. So once I've got the aesthetic, the romantic attraction is, is like, oh, I can see me kissing this guy. I can see me holding this guy's hand. I could see me loving his clothes. I could see me feeling like romantic with him so it kind of goes from aesthetics like very very attractive to the look to like him being kissable and to thinking up scenarios in my imagination of what it would be like to do romantic things such as hold hands kiss go on dates so this is what it feels like to experience romantic attraction it feels very much like you're imagining and picturing yourself with that person in a relationship, doing romantic things such as taking walks, holding their hand, kissing them, that type of thing. Do you see what I mean? So you've got the instant aesthetic attraction in my case and the followed by cl very closely by immediate romantic attraction. Because for me, aesthetic and romantic usually go together. But he got he already got me a bit romantic attracted to him because of the wording he used for me, you know which I've just gone through. 
So I hope this has given you some very useful, helpful, insightful information into what romantic attraction feels like, especially when it's instant. Like, you know, like I experienced like romantic a bit as soon as I heard he messaged. And then obviously I wanted to know what he looked like. And then, you know, the fact he's 21 is very, very attractive to me because I like younger guys, as you know. I don't want an older guy, you know. I was talking to an older guy in asexualitic and he's just like, it's just like, I'm definitely not his type, you know. I'm too, like, outspoken. I think he wants someone who's really timid and worries about what he's, what she says to every single person. And, you know, it's like, oh, I just can't be that type of person. Do you know what I mean? I'm young, you know. I'm vibrant and energetic. I'm not going to sit here worried every five minutes about what I say to people. It's just like I'm outspoken. I think he wants, like, a reserved, quiet girl for him, by the sound of it, or older person i mean the, the guy i speaking to on age actually he's in his late 30s i think it is or 35 upwards anyway so you know it's a bit old for me i think he's too old for me i prefer to be with guys 20s uh just want to it was so having a all oh, right just want to say oh this is ray because ray's had a second date today just wanted to say it was so nice having a date tonight without worrying about the pressure of sex yes it's really really good ray do you think she'll always be like that? Because obviously you said that you didn't want sex and that's great because you're asexual. I'm glad that you know you're asexual now because I found Ray in a sexual dating group and I saved him from the sexual dating group. Just think what would have happened if I hadn't found you, Ray. Oh my God, I shudder to think. Um, but I'm I'm really happy. And so Ray's only in asexual dating groups now while well, I'm still in those sexual ones as well. Uh, it's good for research. That's all I can say. It's an experience. Um, not really the type of experience you want, but never mind. Um, but yeah, so so yeah, that is really, really, really good because that's what I would like a relationship with that pressure of worrying about sex. So, and it's good because you told her you weren't going to do that. So, but some people who say they're okay with that can change their mind. I don't know if you know that. So I'm hoping that she's not going to change her mind because some people think you're just saying that at the beginning and like later on you'll want that and they'll change and start getting sexual with you. So do you think she might do that with you, or do you, are you certain that she's not interested in having sex with you? Because this is how it goes usually for asexuals. We find someone we really like, we tell them we don't want sex, and then like months later down the line, they f we find out they actually want sex after all and can't be in a relationship with us without sex. That's what often happens. Not always, but often. Um, do you know what I mean? But some some people are okay without sex. There are few and far between, though. But there are exceptions where you know some people are not bothered about sex. I mean, I know that with her age, she might not be so bothered, but she's very young looking and energetic still, isn't she? So don't know early days, yeah. Mm. Yeah, because you know that's the only thing that asexuals have experienced in the past, and that I hadn't mentioned to you before is that you know, we can get into a relationship with someone and when they say we don't want sex, they then think it's just like temporary when we're first dating. They don't think it's a lifelong thing. That's why I make sure I explain asexuality and my sexual orientation is asexual. But even then, when you do, some of them don't believe you. They just think you're being like sweet and nice in the beginning and you're not taking advantage of them like loads of others would do. Do you know what I mean? So, um, so yeah, that's why it gets a bit difficult. Um, but yeah, I you know, I'm I'm glad it went really well. I mean, at the end of the day, um hopefully she'll just like listen to what you said. Do you know what I mean? Uh, if you said you you don't have sex, you don't have sex. Maybe have you told her you're actually asexual though? Have you told her you're asexual and sexual orientation? Or have you just said that you don't like sex? You're not you don't have sex, do you know what I mean? Um, because she might just think you're being a polite guy who's not taken advantage of her early on. Do you know what I mean? Um, you'll probably soon know when she starts kissing you as to whether it's going to be leading to more or not. Oh, yes, you have. Well, hopefully she'll be fine with it then. She might end up being asexual herself. You never know. <laughs> with any luck, it'll be good for you. But yeah, I'm really pleased for you. The point is you've got someone you're dating. She's really, really keen on you. And hopefully she'll just be okay without sex. Do you know what I mean? There's a lot of other things you can do. And you've got a lot in common anyway. I always think that's a good thing. It's always a good thing. And like when, from a romantic point of view, 
Um, she likes your cooking. Oh, that's great, Ray. Uh, yeah, that's wonderful. I've been sorting out my kitchen today, actually. It's something I don't usually do, but I've been, th- you know, getting things ready to get rid of, move on. Like I said, I'm I'm having a new life. So I'm getting ready for my new life. So if you want to get ready for your new life, make way for it by getting rid of some of your stuff and getting space for new things in your life. That's what I'm doing. Uh, that's really, really good. I'm so glad, Ray. This is good. This is really positive. Congrats. You're having more luck than me with dating. I've been on the asexual dating scene for, since 2014. This year, you only only short time ago, you found out you're asexual and you've already got a date. Wow. I think I'll have to learn from you. <laughs> oh, but she asked you out on the date. It's a first date, didn't she? It's great. See? But maybe it's because you found out you're ase- asexual and that's your truth that you found her. As I often believe in life, it's only when you find your truth, who you really are, your true authentic you, your core heart and being, that you are going to actually find the love of your life. If there's things in your life which mean you you don't know yet, you don't understand yourself fully, you won't find the right love to be with because you won't be being your true, authentic self. Do you know what I mean? Thank you so much, Sandra. You're welcome, Ray. I think it's really good, you know. You found out you're asexual in a short space of time, then you've already got a date and it's going really well. You know, there's no reason why, you know, if you've told her you don't have sex, you know, it hasn't put her off you and you've told you're asexual. So there you go. And you've got so much in common. You know what I mean? It's really, really positive, Ray. I'm really happy for you. Everyone can learn from you. I honestly think that most of my friends will be in asexual relationships before I am. I think I will be the last person to get into a relationship. Because I do this channel as well. Do you know what I mean? Most guys, they want someone who's quiet and not outspoken and out to the world about being asexual. And sometimes when they find out I'm on this channel... That's why it's good to get out and meet people. Yes, Ray. Absolutely. If you're dating, it's good to go out and date people. Yeah. And that's why I'm going to be going out dancing still. Like next year, I'm going to go out dancing more as well to get, you know, because I know that if there's going to be a foreign guy in the UK, he's going to be in that club. But it might not be the type of guy that's up for a relationship. A lot of people who are going to nightclubs are not really into relationships. A lot of them. Uh, they either go out with their friends, they're with their partner already, or they're up for sex and out for sex. Do you know what I mean? Uh, but you never know. Like a guy I might meet might be with his friends, but then it's hard to talk to someone if they're with friends. Or I might get lucky and there might just be a guy who ended up being single and he's foreign, and he's on his own there and he doesn't know what the hell he's doing and not really his type of thing usually. But yeah, I still, you know, it's good to go out loads of places and meet people. I self date a lot. <laughs> I meet myself regularly. Um, But yeah, it's very good to go out. But I, you know, that's why I think I'm, you know, I'm going to be in a much better position to meet my guy later on in when I, you know, when my career I've sorted out, I'm, I'm sorting my place out at the moment. I'm sorting my career out at the same time. These next few months are going to be very, very huge for me because I'm launching new businesses. Uh, Join an archery club. You might meet someone. I'm not into archery. Ray, I don't like shot. I mean, I, I, I tried archery once. I used to always want to try it, but I, I've got problems with my, you know, I have fibromyalgia, so I can't lift the bow up and keep it. This, this here hurts me. It's very painful because the fibro is hurting here. I have old injuries. I have a tore the tendon in this arm a long time ago, and I tore the ligament in that a week and a half later from putting pressure on that, and I still have two pressure points, one either side where it hurts. No guy can grab hold and or put his arm on there. It hurts like hell. And I can't do, I can't lift above shoulder height. I'm not supposed to, I can't do the heavy lifting. To do this and put my arms up like this really, really hurts me. So archery is not suitable. If I go bowling, I have to have a kid's bowling ball because of my fibro. Do you know what I mean? Like I don't, I manage my fibromyalgia very, very well because I don't do things that's going to cause me damage or that I can't physically do and keep up without my arms going to spasms. That's why I can't do a normal job because I can't do heavy lifting. Do you know what I mean? And stuff like that. Uh, Just go and watch the young men. It's not interesting for me, Ray, to be honest with you. I'd rather be out clubbing. You know, I'm a young girl. 
who, you know what I mean? I don't want to go and I, I'd rather be building a website to be quite honest with you. I'm either out clubbing, going to the cinema, eating food, or I'm doing business stuff. That's kind of how I like my life. Do you know what I mean? Like I would, if there was any singles groups in in my city, I'll go. But the singles groups are in London, and unless I go and move to London or visit London and go then then, then there isn't any singles groups in in my city or in Devon that I could find up on Meetup.com. I thought mm, maybe I should start one. Um, but yeah, you know, I don't. You know, I want a guy who's probably a business guy into IT, that type of thing. But a guy should find me anyway. If a guy's right for me, he should find me. Do you know what I mean? Um, he might be into business entrepreneur and I'm going to meet him at a business seminar in London in the future. Do you know what I mean? Or when I'm on stage in London, because I intend to be a speaker on stage in London in the future for other business stuff, you know? I've been a, a speaker at the UK Asexual Riot Conference last year, but I want to be speaking with other businesses. Uh actually on stage in London at the Excel Centre. That's one of my ambitions. I see it clearly that I should be on the stage. I should be speaking on stage. So that's why, you know, so I might find my guy later on, you know, he might be at a business seminar. He's, he might be a speaker himself. Do you know what I mean? That type of life is what I want, really. So I think it will happen when it happens. And um. The romantic side just takes over sometimes. And I'm like, oh, I'm so romantic right now. I wish I had someone to kiss and cuddle and snog in my case. But yeah, so, you know, I don't like, sh you know, don't forget, I don't like sharp, pointy things either. But yeah, I've done, I tried archery once, but it was hard. It did hurt my arms a bit. But, you know, it's not suitable for me. No, not, no upper body stuff like this. When I, um, before I was diagnosed with fibro, when the guy, when my physio found out something wrong with me, and sent me off for testing to, to get tested for different things to find out it was fibro. Um, he said that my outer muscles are really, really strong because I got really big muscles. My outer muscles are really strong, but my inner muscles are very weak. So do you know what I mean? I, I do a lot of exercises every morning, usually. He thought, I will find you when the time's right. Yeah. I have to, you know, like I really, really, I just keep wanting to change my life, but you know, I'm trying. I'm trying really hard, you know, getting rid of like stuff that I've had for years. Cause like I did in a, said in a previous video, you know, if you want something new to come into your life, you've got to get rid of old stuff. When the cup is flowing, overflowing, stop pouring. You know, when the cup is full, stop pouring. Cause otherwise it'll overflow and you, you won't have room for things in your life. I, I'm making room for my guy now in my life. Do you know what I mean? The guy in the future I'm making room for now. That's what you have to do. If you want someone to come into your life, I have to make some room for them and some space in your life. Otherwise, you know, you're not, when you get into a relationship or the, the opportunity presents itself, you're not, you're just going to be like, oh, well, I don't know how I'm going to have time to see them. I don't know how this is going to work. Do you know what I mean? But I think my guy might be in London and I haven't got the money to go to London at the moment. So in the future, I will have though. So, um, do you know what I mean? I like London and there's a lot of singles events in London, but I don't live in London. If I wasn't living in my city, I'd live in London, but it's very smoggy up there and I'm not sure I want to live in there because it tends to be nicer down here. But yeah, so, um, but I'm definitely going to keep going dancing because I absolutely love dancing. Dancing is my thing, you see. And ideally, it'd be good if he liked dancing so we can go out dancing together. Because even if I was in a relationship, I'd probably still want to go out dancing because I I have done dance classes in my past. I've got a bronze in freestyle disco dancing. I don't know if you knew that, Ray, because you're newer to this channel. Did you know I got bronze in freestyle disco dancing? Uh, I took um, lessons and did a bronze um, exam and got highly commended. And I had to do two dances. I will show you my plaque if I, you haven't seen it. Um, so this is what I got. Um, I'm in my night gear. This is what I got. This is a bronze at Sally Gray School of Dance. It's a bit chipped, as you can see. <laughs> it's fallen over a few times, which now I make sure that... Um, I don't think you can see it very well. Anyway, it's Sandra Bellamy, Sally Gray School of Dance. Yeah, so this is actually the bronze. I didn't, I was busy working, so I didn't, I uh, wasn't able to do, carry on with it. And it's chipped, sadly. But, you know, um, I love freestyle disco dancing, which basically means you do your own moves. Like, 
You know what I mean? Like when I go clubbing, it's salsa night at the beginning and you're supposed to do salsa dancing. Well, I do dancing and swing my hips, but I don't do proper salsa dancing. I just do my own thing. Do you know what I mean? And um, and I also have taken ballroom and Latin American dance classes when I was at school. And I've done Irish Appalachian dancing for fun as part of a team of people. Um, thank you, Ray. Very nice. So, you know, dancing is my thing. I don't want to do like archery is your thing, not my thing. Do you know what I mean? I like I always wanted to try archery and I gave it a go, but it's too it's not, you know, it's not right for me. I'm not saying I'd never have a go at it once again, but it's not, you know, it's not right for me. It's not my thing. If I was 20, we would be a good match. <laughs> Thank you, Ray. But how, but we wouldn't, we would in some ways, but not in others, because you like archery, you like sharp objects, you like knives and stuff. I hate all that. Do you know what I mean? You, your, your, your home is good for you but it's not like you've got a lot of browns like you've got brown carpet a lot of browns i like bright colors i like pink and and yellow and red do you know what i mean so i think in terms of like personalities if you were 20 we would get on really well in terms of like um relationship needs in terms of like the fact you message and you know you video chat you you send me videos you photograph we gone so so well if you were 20 or well you'd need to be 30 years younger wouldn't you because you're 55 so in order to be 25 you'd need to be 30 years younger 20 do you know what i mean that's right isn't it two from five leaves 20 so and you're 55 yeah so you need to be you'd need to be is that right is that right You'd need to be, yeah, if you were 20, not 20 years. Yeah, 20. Sorry, I did. I misread what you said. If you were 20, yes. If you were 20, we would be a good match in terms of like personalities and needs in terms of relation, but not in terms of like things in common as much because you are good at archery. You like shooting. You like boxing. You like sharp things. I don't like any of that. Do you know what I mean? Giving things up is easy for me but only keep the archery he he <laughs> i know you said ages to go you said i'd move for you <laughs> i was very shocked at that well i don't i actually like archery i like archery it's just that i can't do it and i i i don't like archery as in i would want to do it a lot but i like archery as in the idea of it if you know what i mean like it's a respectful good thing but i don't personally do it myself i tried it once i wouldn't i would try it again but i wouldn't try it to actually do it because it hurts my arms there's no point with fibromyalgia you have to manage your pain condition very very well so you don't have much pain so you stay clear of what you know is going to hurt you uh you do go through some pain when you do exercise so i do lots of exercise in the morning i'm really really flexible like i don't know if you know how flexible i am this has got nothing to do with the the attraction romantic well it has i guess because ray's romantically attracted to me aren't you ray but yeah see like even though i have fibro i'm very 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 flexible like this is putting my leg up now i'll put the like you see what i mean like i'm really <laughs> whoops i'm really really flexible do you see what i mean i'm standing on one leg here <laughs> in my dressing gown and uh yeah i can even get this leg right up here as well so I'm standing on one leg at the moment. Ah, I'm going to steady myself before I fall over. But you know what I mean? I'm very flexible. And um, I think I could do, oh God, I can usually do it, but I'm not usually doing it on a live stream. Do you know what I mean? Like I've got my, <laughs> I'm just trying to steady myself so I don't fall over. But yeah, um, the only archery I would hamburger at archery restaurant well, that's really funny so yeah see i'm really really flexible even though i've got fibro do you know what i mean that's what i'm just trying to prove that just because you have it you know just because you've got pain condition so i do a lot of exercises to get in that shape do you know what i mean like <laughs> it's like do you know what i'm saying it's kind of hard to do this usually people can't usually do this when they've got their leg right up in the air like this. Do you know what I mean? And I'm just sat here talking to you. Ah. 
That's my exercise for tonight. So, um, yeah, so I'm good at actually being really flexible, which helps when you're snogging a guy, actually. If we're going to talk about that. So despite the fact I'm asexual, I spoke before about the fact I do have some sexual behaviour, and that's when I kiss. So if I'm kissing a guy, I'll wrap my legs right round him if I'm facing him and snogging him. Do you know what I mean? And so with my legs being that way, I can do that. I can put my legs, but wrap my legs round him quite easily. It helps if you're very flexible to be able to do these things. So yeah, so um, with fibro, you know, like I, I, I don't, you know, I live by my own rules, and I, I'm very. I can do a lot more than most people can. Do you know what I mean? Like to be able to do stuff like that, mo like people who haven't even got fibro can't even do that type of thing. Some of them, do you know what I mean? They haven't got that flexibility, but I have because I train my legs to do that. And I do exercises most days in the morning. Um, I'm going to read that again, Heather. The only artery I would hamburger at artery restaurant. You eat a hamburger at artery restaurant. That's funny. But yeah, so I think, you know, I think like in terms of what Ray was saying about me, you and me being a good match, I think in terms of like relationship needs as in like chatting together and getting on and all that type of thing. Yeah, but I think in terms of interests, you know, I think Ruth's better for you because she's um, she's got a lot more in common with you. Do you know what I mean? In terms of and your your home's very brown. That's a very old colour. Do you know what I mean? They're very old colours. When old people... I'm being very stereotypical here, but when old people have decor, usually it's usually browns. I'm not into browns. That's old for me. I need young, vibrant, energetic colours. Do you know what I mean? Like reds and oranges and pinks and, you know what I mean, for my home. I like like, like bright colours. I like Disney stuff and things like that. Do you know what I mean? So I, I like, you know, a lot of bright stuff and bubbly stuff like my personality. You know, I couldn't be around darker colours like that all the time. But I think, you know, Ruth's going to be very good for you because she's got a lot in common with you. She like, does archery. She likes, like, stuff like you like. And I just think, and she's more your age as well. So I just think she's going to be really good for you. And she lives near you as well, which is obviously a bonus. I don't even live anywhere near you. Um, do you know what I mean? And, you know, she's better for you. I just think in terms of, like, you know what I mean? You you know, you, you're a better match for her and her, you, because of the things in common you have. Do you know what I mean? I think so. Whereas I like, you know, like, I like, um, I know you do like going on roller coasters so in theme parks and stuff like that. But, you know, you know what I mean? I just think she's going to be better for you. So, but yes, if you were 20, it might... <laughs> I know I was showing one of my friends your picture and they go, oh, yes, I can see why you're not aesthetic attracted because obviously you're older than me. But if you were like, if you were like a lot younger, like early 20s, it'd probably be different. <laughs> I'm like, yes, Ray did say that as well. <laughs> but it's nice that you admit that, Ray. It's very sweet of you. I do appreciate it. I'm very flattered. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. It's really nice. I have to say, Ray, Ray, see, uh, you are ideal as well. The fact you come in my chat and tell me that. You come in my chat and you're not afraid to say how you feel about me. I need a young guy in his early 20s to be able to do that. He's not afraid of saying that in public. Do you know what I mean? Like... It's like really weird. It's like sexual guys don't usually bother, but it's like asexual guys. As soon as they find out I'm out to the world about being asexual and have a channel, most of them it's kind of like, oh, no, can't be with you. Sorry. <laughs> I mean, because they want a shy girl who's not out to the world about being asexual and just is a, you know, is a, I don't know, is a reserved person. I'm not like that at all. I never will be. It's not who I am. Do you know what I mean? And I'm only going to get more and more well known, not just for asexuality, but other stuff. So if a guy can't handle that, there's no point. That's why he might be a business guy or entrepreneur like me. Do you know what I mean? And I might meet my guy in the future when I am more successful in my career and have an opportunity, at a business seminar or something. He might be. I got a feeling he's in London, and I'm probably going to meet him at a business seminar or something like that. Do you know what I mean? I would have thought so. Oh, it might just be on the tube. Oh, there's this one cute guy, though. I will never, ever forget it. And I just wished he would be, a, he'd been beautiful aesthetically to be in a relationship with. 
<laughs> That's what I can say. Like, I, d I did mention it on this channel a long time ago, but as Ray's newer to this channel, I'm going to, and in t as this video is about romantic attraction, aesthetic attraction, pretty much instantly, then I'll go through this little bit again, what happened, because this is the same sort of thing, right? And he is drop dead gorgeous, right? So I was at the UK Asexuality Conference as a speaker last year, as you know. And my friend Martin did the videoing for that, uh, for that meetup um, talk I did. So I did a 45 minute meetup talk. And I also took part in the relationships pal discussion. And my friend Martin videoed my bits. And I was so glad because the rest of the footage that the other person did didn't turn out. So mine tends to be the only footage from the previous year, 2018. So to cut a long story short, Martin and me were staying in the same hotel because he was my cameraman in different rooms. I have to let you know because we are both asexual and we're friends uh, only. And so we were, we were in separate rooms and near each other, though. And um, and we were on the tube together because we were spending the whole like three days together, I think it was. And we met via Skype. Uh, for two years and being friends, met via Skype and stuff like that, but that's the first time we met in person. Anyway, we were on the tube, and as we went to get off the tube, there was this beautiful, beautiful guy. He, he probably looked about 19, if I'm honest with you, and he was absolutely, he could have been 21, he was absolutely stunningly beautiful, right? He looked like he was from Sri Lanka or somewhere like that. And he had short, dark hair, was clean shaven, thin, exactly my aesthetic type of attraction. So I was really instantly attracted to him. I thought he was gorgeous. And he, I could tell, was attracted to me because of his behaviour. Like, my friend Martin was there and I was there. And we were stood up. You know, if you don't know the tubes in London, they have, like, poles going down, right? So I was holding on to one pole. Martin was holding on to the other pole. And this guy who, who looked really young, he did look about 19, actually, if I'm honest. But um, he, like I say, might have been a little bit older than that. He was stood by the door, right? And I needed to get off soon. And he was stood by the door, but it was really, really, really bizarre because he kind of, like, came nearer to me. And I felt like he was protecting me. It was the most surreal feeling ever. I've never had that where I just, you know, like from a stranger, where I just felt like he was close, came closer to me because I felt like he was protecting me. And then he purposely, um, he got off the tube to, to let me get off. He didn't have to do that. He was a young guy. There wasn't really anyone in the doorway apart from he was at the doorway. But he could have just moved to the side because there was plenty of room. But no, he didn't. He got off the tube, especially, to go back to, like, let me off the tube. And I just remember saying, thank you for being so gorgeous. And he was like, like this, and his whole face lit up. And it was like, it was the most beautiful thing anyone had ever said to him in his life. And he was just smiling so much. And I just, I really got the feeling that he liked an older woman because I just like, I just felt he was protecting me. It was just really, really surreal. You know, when you can feel someone really likes you and is attracted to you and they're in your space, it's like that energy they're putting out is an attraction energy. That's what I felt from him. But obviously I didn't get his number. I didn't give him mine and I'll never see him again in my life. And it was like, it's one of those things where you kind of wished you had given him your number but then you kind of think, well, if he had given you a number, it probably wouldn't have amounted to anything because he'd probably been too young. And also he might not have even stayed in this country. And it, I think he probably was from London. But, um, you know, he's probably too young, probably wants marriage and kids and all the rest of it, like most of them do. And so it probably wouldn't have worked out anyway if I had given my number. But do you know what I mean? Afterwards, you think, oh, if only you'd given the number just to have that opportunity of maybe something else. But I don't think it would have worked anyway. I think it was just a moment thing. but. You know, he was so gorgeous. I just remember thinking you are one of the most, well, probably the most gorgeous guy I've ever seen. Like, maybe not the most gorgeous, but um, one of the most gorgeous guys I've ever seen in my life. He was just, but when I said thanks for being so gorgeous, I didn't even realise what I said because I was meaning it as in you're being, oh, I honestly thought it was gorgeous. But when I said it, I was thinking, thanks, when I said thanks for being so gorgeous, I meant like you, you've been such a gentleman as in, you know, stepped off the tube to let me off, which most guys wouldn't do. So I meant that's a gorgeous thing to do, but I was actually thinking you're gorgeous. So it kind of came out as what I really thought when I was trying to 
cover it up with a your your actions were gorgeous but I, they were both gorgeous so <laughs> what i actually what i actually thought i said do you know what i mean so it it was quite funny in the sense that when i said thanks for being so gorgeous i actually knew it was gorgeous but i was trying to compliment him on the way he was behaving towards me <laughs> and then i'm like oh well i did mean that anyway because he was gorgeous i mean so beautiful like he's beautiful hair beautiful face and I like thin guys and it was his manner it's like I felt like he was near me protecting me and I just loved that you know and I just kind of wished sometimes he would pop back up in my life and I'd be like oh you were that guy from the tube years ago like oh my god <laughs> but yeah you know like in the romance fairy tale because obviously with romantic attraction, you kind of like live in a fairy tale a bit more. Like you idolize the person and you put them in scenarios that you wish you could be in with them, like holding their hand, kissing and cuddling and being in a loved up relationship with them, even though practically and realistically it might never happen and is unlikely to. And if it did, it might not be as good as you think it is. Do you know what I mean? So that's how romantic attraction goes. It's kind of like, um, kind of like you imagine scenarios what if this what if that and you kind of idealize the the ideal you know you kind of idealize your ideal type of relationship with that person even when you don't know them you kind of think things up in your imagination like what if this was to happen what if that was to happen like and you feel you know like like you know but when when someone like goes off the tube like that to me it's a very romantic thing like out of a movie do you know what i mean it's like oh you know like he didn't have to do that he could have literally just moved to the side and and i go out he didn't have to make himself known that he was specifically moving off the tube I mean, most people don't move on the tube when they got, uh, you know, some do when it's crowded, but it wasn't crowded, like, by the doors. He was really, I don't think there was many people by the doors apart from him, do you know what I mean? And he specifically did that for me to get off because he was looking at me when he did it. Um, so, yeah, it was a very beautiful experience, but... You know, I always think, oh, I wish I could still speak to that guy now. I wished I could still talk to him. I wished I could get to know him better. It would be really, really nice. But I think it was just one of those moment things that, you know, sometimes like when you are really romantic and you have this notion about romance and how it might go and it doesn't then live up to your expectation and you then feel disappointed and you kind of like it's better really for you to just imagine it and not try and want it to come into reality. And I think it's difficult. Like, I think, like, with me particularly, because I'm very romantic with myself, I self-date a lot, um, I think it'll be hard for a guy to actually live up to the amount of romance I feel with myself. I don't think it's impossible, but I think it's hard. I mean, I even said to my best female friend, like, I'm so romantic with myself, I feel loved up all the time with myself, I take myself out on dates, and I think it's going to be very difficult for me to get a relationship with a guy who makes me feel as good in terms of romance, uh, with me, you know, it makes me feel as good romantically with him as I do myself, if that makes sense. So I make myself feel so romantic and happy and loved up. I don't know if a guy could compete with that and make me as happy. Because I don't want to have second best. I don't want to get into a relationship and feel like I'm less, you know, I'm experiencing less romance than I do with myself. Because that to me is just a letdown and a settling for second best. And I won't have second best. If a guy can't be as romantic towards me as I am myself, then there's no point in me being in a relationship with him because I would just be disappointed, upset, miserable, and fed up. It would be like, well, I got all this with myself when I was single. Now I'm in a relationship. Is this it? Do you know what I mean? Am I just going to be bored? Am I not going to experience romance? Am I just going to like have a bit of romance and then it's all going to fizzle out? That's not how I play, you know? I believe life is so vibrant, energetic, and I believe you play it all out as much as possible whenever you can. Like, you should live life to the max and continue playing all out. You know, that means if I'm romantic now, I want to still be romantic in 10 years' time, 20 years' time, tomorrow. Do you know what I mean? I don't want it to, like, go away all of a sudden. I hate this. All oh, you've got to a certain age. Like, let's not be like this anymore. It's rubbish. Do you know what I mean? I'll always love Christmas. I want to be with a guy who thinks Christmas is as magical as I do, or at least wants to participate in my magical Christmas feeling. Do you know what I mean? And and support it and encourage it because that's what I had in the past with my ex to be quite honest with you um you know I mean I did experience quite a lot of the stuff uh I experienced bad stuff 
in relationships before, but I had to experience some of the things I like to experience, like kissing all the time, you know, a lot of the time, like holding hands in public, kissing around the zoo, aquarium, theme parks, you know, like romance, you know, like um, magical Christmas and stuff like that. Um, you know, being treated like a girl and having a teenager star relationship more in some ways, you know, um, that was like the good side of the stuff, not the bad side. Um, but, you know, I do want a decent guy for me. It's most important I have a decent guy. But, you know, if I end up being single for a very long time, it's fine. I don't I don't see me getting to be with anyone in a relationship anytime soon, to be quite honest with you. I don't see a guy popping up being the right guy for me. But um, you never know, do you? But I want to really, really um, focus on changing my life a lot. I think it's important. Like I said, that if the cups full, stop pouring, which means you have to make space in your life. You have to, you know, clear out stuff that's no longer serving you. Get rid of things like if it's business, like if things aren't working, then change what you're doing. Get rid of some stuff. Get some new stuff. If it's a, uh, if it's um, a relationship, you know, you need to make space for that person. Like, have you got space in your wardrobe for that person? Should they want to be in your life and come over and stay? Have you got a double bed or is it a single you're going, you're sitting on, you know, lying on, going to sleep on? You know, have you got, it's like I'm getting rid of some stuff in my kitchen because I hate cooking, but I'm still keeping a few bits that I don't use because I know my future guy might want to use them. He can cook for himself. I'm not interested. But, you know what I mean? Like I'm getting rid of things like a cake tin at the moment because it's like I don't really use, bake cakes and a big... Uh, roasting dish you know what I mean like if a guy really wants to roast something he can go and buy another roasting dish but um but so at the moment you know I, I got you know I'm getting rid of those things but there's some things I'm still keeping because I thought well I might use them possibly in the future but most likely you know a guy might use them you know so um but you know again I might still get rid of them if I need to so I'm I'm kind of making way for my future life and kind of get rid of some stuff as well because I'm thinking well if I do need to move in the future for whatever reason, I need to make sure I've cut down on stuff I've got so I'm not, like, moving with so much stuff. Do you know what I mean? I'm not saying I am moving because I absolutely adore it here. But, you know, I've got to cut down stuff I've got here anyway to make more space because when, you, when your, like, whole space is a bit cluttered and you've got too much stuff in it from your past, you know, you're harboring past bad energy, you know, you're harboring like energy from past exes and stuff like that. It's not healthy. It's better to get rid of it as much as possible. And, you know, when you've got lots of stuff cluttering, it's a sign that you kind of cluttered in your mind and in your life. So it's good to get rid of some clutter and rid of some stuff that you no longer use. Like, obviously, if you're still using stuff, then you don't have to get rid of it. You know what I mean? Um, but having said that, you know, if you want a complete overhaul and change, then get rid of it and get new stuff. But if you can't afford new stuff, keep what you use or you like and then you know you can always gradually change it around later on do you know what I mean so there's some stuff I'm not getting rid of now that I might get rid of later on like I might get new stuff later on um but we'll see what the future holds and what life brings us yeah so I hope you've liked this video I hope you found it useful helpful insightful in some way I hope you've understood you know what aesthetic attraction is aesthetic attraction is the way someone looks and you know in, it could be with me my aesthetic attraction is uh features of the face of a person so it's like their hair their eyes their nose their mouth that's my aesthetic attraction but some people when they talk about aesthetic attraction it could be you know like some people are well into beards i'm not into beards but it could be that some people love guys with beards or love guys with tashes or it could be that some people love uh experience aesthetic attraction with guys who are bald for example it could be someone who experiences aesthetic attraction with someone who's muscly for example but aesthetic is all to do with look the outward appearance the the skin and the face and the body and the physique that's like aesthetic attraction usually with asexuals we look at someone more like a picture so whereas sexuals will look at someone as I'm really sexually attracted to you. I want sex now with you. Uh, asexual will look at a person more like more like a pretty painting, if that makes sense. More like a pretty picture or handsome picture. Do you know what I'm saying? It'll be more like admiring a picture of someone than actually looking at them for sexual reasons because in the main we don't experience sexual attraction. Do you see what I'm saying? And then with romantic attraction, it's very much like 
you would look at a person and think what you'd like to do with them romantically, like kiss, cuddle, hold hands with them. You also think about your future, like romantic things, like taking moonlit strolls under the moonlight, um, you know, like um, walking hand in hand and the guy's got the umbrella over me and, um, you know, uh, you know, that type of cute or maybe like um, stickering. I like stickering, you know, those stickers you can get on Facebook, which are like emojis with the love hearts and stuff like that. So, you know, I, I might be, you know, and I'd be picturing myself as a, in a future scenario with the person. I've only, in my case, I've only just met. It's like, oh, what would it be like if I was going around a theme park with this guy and I was holding his hand and I was kissing him? Wouldn't it be wonderful? And that type of thing. So you kind of like use your imagination a lot about scenarios that haven't even happened yet. And they're usually of a romantic, kissy, intimate type of, um, you know, notion. So that's really romantic attraction. Um, and, you know, like a romantic feelings as well would be like if you, you know, like if you're in a room with someone and you're really attracted to them, you'd want to grab their hand and hold it and feel the warmth of their hand. and you know, you'd want to cuddle them, put your arms around them, and feel their warmth of their body around you, that type of thing with romantic attraction. That's that's what a lot of it feels like. It might feel different to different people because obviously different people are different. I mean, some some people don't like a touch adverse, so they don't like to be touched. So if they were feeling romance, but they didn't like touching, they might like have really strong feelings for that person. That they might want to get super close to them in other ways or they might want to write a love note to them or like I said they might still want to do romantic things in other ways just minus the touch like take the moonlit stroll together talk about you know your future life together talk talk about um what you love and like about the person like how beautiful they are how pretty how you love their smile you know it's kind of like when you're romantic you kind of want to say a lot of nice things to them but you know some people who are autistic I've got some autistic friends they don't think about what the person looks like so they don't think to say you've got nice hair they don't think to say your eyes are beautiful it doesn't enter their head because of the way they are autistically so you know there are exceptions to the rules and there are differences between people you know every person's different but I just want to give you an idea from my perspective what romantic attraction feels like to me so that if you have no idea of what romantic attraction would ever feel like in your life because you don't experience it then I just wanted to let you know that's what it feels like to me and that's what it may feel like to some other people but everyone is different you know but I think you know it's, it's it, a lot of it's to do with like you kind of like um you kind of like put them in scenarios in your head um with you do you know what I mean that haven't even happened yet and you kind of think that put them on pedestals and you kind of think the best possible outcome that you'd ideally like even if it's unrealistic or even if it's like never going to happen or even if it's like ne not happened yet do you know what I mean so I do think you put them on a pedestal, which isn't good because you have to remember these people are human beings just like you. They've got their faults and you don't even know what they are yet. You know, I, it's dangerous for someone to experience romantic attraction so soon to someone uh, if you're putting them on a pedestal, because that might mean that they have bad behavior and you just overlook that. And so that is the danger of romantic attraction. Like, I think people who don't experience romantic attraction have more of a level head about them. So I'm giving some praise to aromantic asexuals here, those that lack romantic attraction. Um, it's like romanticizing no sugar chocolates. <laughs> I love you, Heather. Yes, in my case, I do romanticize no sugar chocolates. So if I look at my advent calendar, I'm like, oh, my God, you're so gorgeous. I just want to suck on that chocolate right now. <laughs> That sounds so naughty, but seriously, I do have a sugar-free advent calendar and I do suck the chocolate in the morning. <laughs> so I'm not making this up. But yes, um, like me to be... So if I'm romantic with myself, right? If I'm romantic with myself, like when I go to the cinema, romance is a feeling. So it's not just an... Uh, romance can be an action. So you take the person's hand, uh, you know, and you pull it close, their hand close towards you. You might kiss their hand. You might, you know, stroke their hair, like stroke their little nose like this, stroke their little ears, or you might, so it might be an action you do when you experience romantic attraction. Um, 
it might be a feeling you have it might be an ideology that you have um, it might be an expression that you do. So for me, when I, I feel romantic with myself all the time, because I am I just feel romance in my body and my being. I feel I'm a really romantic person, like probably too romantic sometimes. It distracts me from my work, to be honest. And, um, and yeah, so, um, you know, if I go to the cinema, to me, I don't have normal feelings. So anyone else goes to cinema, it might be just like a kind of like regular chore thing they might do. It might be something like they go um cinema you smell nice popcorn <laughs> yes Heather I normally take my own but I have to be careful not to overeat that but yeah but with this cinema for me it's the excitement of the whole experience I seriously feel like I'm a loved up teenager with myself when I go to the cinema I have the feeling of magic and wonder it, it feels like to me I'm in Disneyland Paris again it's the same sort of feeling that is projected from my being. So when I go to the cinema, I just feel like it's the most incredible, amazing, euphoric, exciting experience ever. Like I just feel like I'm in a, you know, like I, I love going to Disneyland Paris and I like lights, camera, action girl. When I am around lights, camera, action, which I guess is what cinema is the majority of the time, because I don't tend to watch romance. Even though I'm really romantic, I don't tend to watch romantic films, which is very ironic because. They're usually very sad a lot of the time. And, well, yeah, they're usually very sad a lot of the time and they don't really do much for me. That sounds a real contradiction, doesn't it? So I get more, I'm more romantic with myself and feel more romance when I go to watch a kids' movie than I do if I watch a romantic film. Romantic films are boring. Butterflies in the stomach. It's not, it's not really butterflies in the stomach, but I know you can get that from romance because when I get butterflies in the stomach, it's normally anxiety and that's not good for me. So I prefer not to get butterflies in the stomach. It's, um, it does something in my stomach, but rather than it being butterflies, it's like an intense, warm excitement. That's how I describe it, an intense, warm excitement. So if I've got butterflies in my stomach, when I have that, because I suffer with anxiety still uh, in some ways, when I get butterflies in my stomach, it's usually bad because it makes me ill, have irritable bowel, feel ill. But when I go to the cinema, I do get a feeling in my stomach, which you're absolutely right, Heather. Uh, but the feeling is like an intense, warm excitement. That's how I feel. I'm like intensely warm and excited. Do you know what I mean? I'm like, oh, like a little kid. I can't wait. I can't wait. I can't wait. Do you know what I mean? That's how it feels to me. And when I'm in there, the whole big screen is just like, I literally am like a kid. I feel like I'm like probably five years old or something. And it's like... You know, like when a kid, when you're a real, really, really kid and you're like five or something, and it's the first time you experience a big screen like that with big audio sign. It's like, wow, this is incredible. This is just like amazing. Wow. And you kind of feel like you're in the movie yourself. That's how it feels to me. I feel like I'm a kid and I'm a teenager and it's like awesome. And the whole like feeling of the cinema just lights me up you know obviously if I watch a film that makes me a bit depressed well I don't suffer with depression now but it's a bit depressive in nature then that's not good you know sometimes come out feeling like oh it's you know the feeling afterwards is not so good but say I watch you know something that's really like a superhero if I watch a superhero movie I feel empowered by it I feel like really strong and like yes I can take on the world which reminds me I need to watch another superhero movie so I can get my energy back because when I watch superhero movies I'm like yes Yes, yes, come on, let's go on, let's move forward, let's do some stuff, build the momentum, take some action, boom, boom, boom. So I kind of feel like I'm the character, <laughs> like the characters. And I just feel like it's magical because I feel magical in that scenario. I feel like wonderful. And the whole feeling of the cinema, I don't know what it is. It's like the feeling of the stairs and the 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 the, the whole place, the atmosphere, I cannot describe how it feels to me. It doesn't feel like a normal place. When I go in there, it literally films like, it feels like you're being on a film set. I can't describe it. I think I must be, <laughs> it's just, it's just magical to me. It's just like I've gone from the outside world and I'm going to this magical, imaginative, imagination place. But obviously a lot of films have a lot of truth in reality. A lot of films are based on real stuff. A lot of sci-fi comes true. Do you know what I mean? So I kind of like don't, you know, when when it's like fiction, I think fiction is very blurred with reality and a lot of it is based on real stuff. You know what I mean? Because I don't kind of, I don't kind of 
think that fiction is completely fiction. I think fiction and reality are pretty much very similar, if not the same, and the fiction becomes the reality a lot of the time. Like a lot of sci-fi movie stuff's coming true. Someone had to make it up in their head. Where did they get that idea from? Something has to have existed to instigate that idea in the mind in the first place. Do you know what I mean? Therefore, it kind of is real just by definition, the fact that it's real in their mind, even though it might be fiction now because it's not actually happening. But it kind of happens in their brain, which makes it kind of real. I better not go into all that. It's a bit deep. But, um, but yeah, so it's, it's like, you know what I mean? I just feel so elated. Elated's the word. It feels like I love Disneyland Paris. Like, I'm a real Disney girl. And I love the lights, camera, action, like I said. So when people, like, have a lot of noise around them, they sometimes hate it. They feel they withdraw. They're like, it's horrible. It feels cluttered to them. It feels disgusting. It feels like they want to run away. It feels nasty and horrible. When I come into, like, noise and, for example, with dancing, it makes me feel euphoric, uh, lights me up, it empowers me, it puts the oomph in my step. You know, if I go out dancing... I feel good in my body. I feel like I'm growing my confidence skills. I feel like all the young people are like me and they're just all wanting to have a good time and sing from the same hymn sheet. We're all wanting to like really enjoy life in the moment. So when I go out dancing, I kind of get a lot of this euphoric feeling as well. It seriously is like in that moment, it's like you haven't really got a care in the world and you're just enjoying the music and you're enjoying feeling so good. Do you know what I mean? And that, those are the moments that I kind of live for, the, the moments where I feel absolutely elated and wonderful. And like right now, I'm just living in this moment and breathing. And it's so beautiful. You know, when I go dancing, I just feel incredible. Like I'm around young guys, usually early 20s, something like that, majority of them, which is my age group, because I always believe I'm in my early 20s because my mindset's like that. And so, and my soul and my beings that way. So I feel like I'm around guys my age and I feel like I'm in the right place. And I feel like, you know, they're just out having fun with their lives. They're just really having a good time and enjoying themselves. There's a lot of romantic stuff, like really, because there's a lot, kind of like a lot of people holding hands, dancing with each other, girls and guys kissing each other quite a bit. So you kind of get a romantic vibe quite a bit as well. And, you know, it just feels wonderful because I, I like noise. I like lights. I like cameras. I like action. I love all that type of thing. To me, that's what movies are made of, lights, camera, action. And to me, when, I, when I'm when i in those moments, I kind of feel like I'm in really living a, mo a, a movie moment, you know? It's like something out of a movie. It kind of is so surreal because you get the feeling as if you were almost in a movie, as if you're experiencing the movie in reality. I don't know how to describe it. So these are the moments for me that make my life feel like I'm loved up and romantic with myself all the time. Like if I go around zoos, I find the animals are so cute and cuddly, some of them. And it's like, oh, I feel all cute and cuddly now. And to me, that's a very romantic feeling, the cuteness, the cuddliness. It's like, oh, we are so cute. Do you know what I mean? And that's why I feel romantic. And I feel like, oh, when I look, go to the aquarium and watch fishes, I'm like, oh, the fishes are so beautiful. Again, aquariums feel very magical to me. You know, like the 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 light and the water, the way it glistens, the way the, the fish uh, all different beautiful tropical colours, particularly the very colourful fish, like the oranges and the yellows and the, the blues and the purples, you know. It's like they're the little beams of light in the water. And I just think that's so magical and romantic. Do you see, even where I talk's romantic, well, I'm listening to myself now, I'm like, Sandy, God, you talk so romantically. Do you know what I mean? And when I talk romantically and and I feel this in my being. I feel like I'm so romantic with myself. It literally like is dating myself. Like it's like you are so romantic, Sandra. And I don't want that feeling to end. I don't want to get into a relationship and that just die off. And I'm like left with what the heck? I'm just living a normal, boring life. Am I? Uh, where's the romance? Do you know what I mean? So I don't want to stop that feeling. That feeling is what makes me elated. It's what makes me feel alive. It's what I love. It's what makes life happy for me. It's what it what makes life feel very special, incredible, romantic and loved up all the time. You know, when I when I do what I love and enjoy, I just feel this is so gorgeous. I mean, I even put music on. I'm like, this is such a marvellous life. You know, if you ever had those moments, I try to have a lot of them where you just put some music on and you're just like, oh, man, I'm alive. And I'm listening to this great song and I'm just feeling the buzz or the excitement like I've been playing Christmas songs today and it's like oh you know all cute and some of the songs are like really cute and cuddly 
they're like lovey lovey dovey songs and they're like one of them's like um the magic of christmas day is by sling deal there's um there's a album i've got a verse it's all the lyrics are about the magic of christmas day and it's um god bless everyone it goes in the end and, and it's like the good and the bad the happy the sad and it's going on about like the joy and the magic of christmas and of course when someone's talking about magic and the the tone of the music's going higher you kind of feel like a euphoric and elated do you know what i mean i can kind of understand why i get aroused easily <laughs> Because my body, because I'm thinking, Sandra, all these experiences are very elating and kind of like arousing the senses. So there's no wonder when I kiss a guy, I kind of, well, I didn't last time I kissed a guy, I didn't get aroused at all in my body. But I can kind of see how they're related now. I'm like, oh, you get a euphoric feeling in your body when you do certain things. You get a euphoric feeling in your mind. You get a euphoric feeling in your being. Yeah. <laughs> so it kind of all interlinks. But yeah, I'm, I I love my life so much now. Like I didn't like need to, I wasn't like this type of person years ago. You know, I was a depressed person until 2012 i used to cry a lot on my own it's i hated life i didn't want to be in it you know i used to think about death a lot which i just like shuddered to think of now it's horrible but now i'm completely opposite because i live my life the way i want to live it. i live it like a teenager and that's why i can't get a guy who's gonna like want an old relationship because i will can't give him that because it doesn't make me happy i've done that life in the past i've been like a let's go to work girl nine to six job and then come home and watch tv and cook or the guy cooks for me and you know that's it night after night it's just not me it's not who i am i don't like the past life when i think about it. it's horrible you know to do with relationships some of it you know and a lot of it in the bad times but um you know but i have mentioned some stuff it's good but you know i i much prefer my life with myself i love my life now it makes me truly happy i love getting up in the morning i love just being in life and enjoying it and i love like the dancing i love like going out to the cinema i love eating good food i like food you know i'm a foodie i love food you know i do like food to eat i do like food to enjoy not just for eating sake but to actually love food i do do that you know like, really, some people are like, oh, you should only, like, when you're trying to get thin or whatever, you should just eat the bare minimum you need to to survive. But I actually do love food as a foodie type of person. I think quite a lot of asexuals can relate to this, you know. We like our food. Not all of us, but a lot of us like our food. Food's quite a big deal. Like, it's kind of, like, really nice. And it's a big deal to me. You know, I like good food. I like food that tastes nice. I can't eat a lot of foods because I've got so many allergies and food intolerances. But when I the ones I can eat, I eat quite a bit of them because I love it, you know. So I think, you know, this is what romance feels like to me as an individual. When I, I'm single on my own, it literally feels like, I'm loved up with myself. It feels magical and tingly. It feels like a warm excitement, you know, and this is how romance feels just with myself. And so I would like to replicate that feeling with a guy because I don't want to accept or be with someone who gives me less than that. And I don't feel, hello, brain, nice to see you. Do you know what I mean? So I don't, I don't want to be with a guy who gives me any less than that because I would feel like I was doing myself a disfavor like I was disconnected from myself like I was disconnected from my pleasures romantic pleasures in life and that I was leading a normal boring life and it I'd feel wrong I'd feel like something wasn't right you know what I mean and right now I feel my life is so incredible you know like if other people looked at it, they might not think it's the ideal life but I you know in this moment in time I think you know it's amazing I think it's incredible because of the way it feels like, you know, the way I make myself feel just by being in life and the experience I have. And I, I love it. You know, like I don't go to bed till two, three or four in the morning usually. And it's kind of like, that's the way I love my life. Like if I like getting up later and working later and it just feels euphoric. You know, it feels like it's different to the norm. It feels like it's outside the box. It feels like it's incredible. If I just, you know, I can't go to bed usually. I mean, occasionally I might go to bed really early if I'm tired, but majority of the time I can't go to bed like at half 10 or what everyone else does. You know, it bores me. I feel like I'm not living. Even if I go to bed at four in the morning and get up midday, I feel like I'm living because I'm doing my work later and I'm sleeping later and I'm just, I, I, 
I get on really well when I'm alive at night, when I'm awake at night. That's why when I'm out, you know, like I go up clubbing till two in the morning. Like when I was with my friend Andy uh, yesterday, he was like, oh, how long are you out for? Like, like when does the club finish? And I'm like, till two. And I think he was a bit surprised. I'm like, yeah, but the guys I'm usually dancing with, they have to, well, the, the what, got Indian guy I danced with twice, who I think is... 28 29 by the look of it he has to go home before i uh, before the club finishes because he's too tired so i mean like i have so much energy like which is not normal for fibro but that's why my book's so good um fibro book check out the links below if you haven't already go and get a copy because it will change your life even if you haven't got fibro believe me it will completely change your life um i sold quite a few copies the other day as well um so i was quite happy about that but yeah um you know I just love my life so much. And that that's why I don't want to get into a relationship with a guy who gives me any less romance than I deserve. I deserve a guy who will give me, you know, a lot of romance. My cat Steve is listening to you. Oh, that's lovely. Hello, Steve. Wow, that's an unusual name for a cat. Oh, Stevie. Stevie. Sorry, Stevie. Stevie. Hello, Stevie. Meow. 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 Oh, that's nice. I've got a new listener. Well, hey, I hope they subscribe and hit the thumbs up. You have to get them to hit the pause up button. Get them to put the pause on the like button. <laughs> That'd be cool. And if you filmed it as well, I'd be even better. I'll put it on the channel. Oh, that'd be so cool. But that, that's really nice. But I'm inspiring, inspiring cats as well. But seriously, I'm I'm literally... As I'm talking, I'm feeling so excited in myself. Like, I'm, like, revved up and pumped up. Can you see, like, when I focus on all the romance that I have, how good it makes me feel? And that's why I don't want to lose that feeling. I don't want to get into a relationship. And it's just like, oh, well, I won't kiss you in public. I won't hold your hand in public. I'm going to bed at half past ten at night. I'm going to watch TV with you for four hours. It's like boring. She is pouring and meowing. Oh! Hello, Stevie. See, I think maybe I have got a good intuition or intelligent connection with animals. Wow. So, what was Stevie in a past life? Was she a cat before? Was she an actual something else? I wonder. Oh, bless her. Is she liking my energetic nature? See, cats are very cute, I have to say. I love cats. I love cats so much. Hello, Stevie. Meow, meow. <laughs> oh, it's so nice to have a cat in the audience, <laughs> the chat. But yeah, so this is what it feels like to me, you know? Like if I go to theme parks, again, it feels like action, adventure, lights, cameras, music. And it just feels like amazing. And one of the best things as well is when you're on a ride and you just, for a few minutes of your life completely forget about everything in the moment and you're like it clears the mind because my mind as you can imagine what it's like in my brain is my mind kind of like thinks of 55,000 things at once quite a lot I've had to try and calm it down lately because otherwise I just get overwhelmed by me thinking about love animals yeah I love animals as well Heather they are beautiful absolutely beautiful I love animals and so does Ray because Ray saves animals lives so it's very good and um, and I'm going to see my angel on Wednesday, my guinea pig angel daughter. I love her so much. I can't wait to see her. She spent nearly an hour, well, 50 minutes, 50 whole minutes on my lap last time I went around. 50 minutes. That's a long time. Guinea pigs usually need the toilet after 15, one, five minutes. And she was on my lap for 50, five, zero. I can't wait to see her. I love her to bits. I haven't spent enough time with her lately, so it'll be so good. I can't wait. She's such a cutie. Love her so much. And um, yeah, so you know, when I when I think about all the scenarios where I feel loved up with myself and I feel romantic, like with theme parks, like if I go on, like I loved going with my friends this year to a theme park. I absolutely had the most amazing time. It's nice to have company. Usually I prefer to go on my own, but when I've got asexuals with me, it's different. I really love being around asexuals and them coming with me. It feels so right, it feels like so much fun. Like this year I went with Sam and Mordecai. And we just had the most amazing, amazing time. And Andy came, but Andy didn't really like the rides very much. So he didn't go on many at all. But um, Sam and Mordecai and me, um, 
she's angel oh thank you oh, thank you awesome she's angel yeah um and so um you know when we went to theme park together we just had the most amazing time and i do like the company of asexual friends you know i do enjoy it you know i'm glad that i went there with them not on my own this time but when i've been to theme parks on my own in the past I can remember the theme, but even if I'm going with people, I still feel romantic in and of myself. It's just that I don't, I don't put the romance out to them. Do you know what I mean? Because obviously I'm not having a romantic relationship with them. I'm still feeling romantic a lot of the time when I'm out to these places, even if I'm with company, I'm still feeling romance in my body. I'm still feeling a romantic experience with myself. Do you know what I mean? I'm feeling, feeling excitement. I'm feeling wonder. I'm feeling joy. I'm feeling like a teenage kid or younger I'm feeling like you know just so in awe and wonder of what's going on around me so if I go to theme park even with my best uh friend Sam and my friend Mordecai you know they're both asexual you know, I was having the most amazing time with them it felt like the most magical experience and they did help to make it magical as well but obviously I'm not feeling romance towards them but I was just like the the actual scenario of me going to a theme park's romantic, the going on rides is romantic to me. So I, I, you know, I can think a gnome, like if I see a gnome in the garden, I can think that's cute and romantic, you know? If I see like a squirrel, um, you know, like collecting his nuts, I'm not being disgusting. I mean, real genuine nuts, you know? I think that's really beautiful. Do you know what I mean? I see a lot of beauty and romance and a lot of stuff. I, everything's coated in romance to me a lot of the time and I'm glad it's like that I'm glad I'm not thinking like the past way of all the horrible stuff I used to think and about not wanting to live you know I'd rather be in my life now I'm so much happier and that's why I don't want to get the wrong guy for me I don't know if I'll ever get a guy who can keep the romance alive as much as I do with myself you know I mean when I'm with a guy I'll still be feeling romantic but not if we're doing certain things that to me is not a very romantic thing to do and if we're starting to do a normal things too much do you know what I mean if we're starting to live too much of a normal life of just like or making me live a normal life I'll be bored I have seen dog and rabbit were friends it's unbelievable how different animals can get along Yes, Heather, it's really shocking that, isn't it? Like, I always get worried because my mum's got a terrier and my guinea pig's around there, but my mum says that the terrier doesn't bother with the guinea pig when I'm not there. You know, um, you can't put them together, like, right near each other, but they don't bother. But when I'm there, she starts licking her lips when I'm holding my angel and I'm like, uh-uh, get back. Do you know what I mean? Because I said to my mum, you know, the terror, she's still a terror after all. She'll still have instincts. Do you know what I mean? And, you know, they're never that close. Usually, but sometimes she jumps up on the sofa when I've got Angel in my arms, you know, and I'm always very wary of that. I don't want them near each other enough because when I sometimes see her down below and she's looking at her Angel, licking her lips, I'm like, that is not a good sign. <laughs> I do not want those two to meet too near each other, if you know what I mean. I won't risk that, you know what I mean? Angel's too precious to me. I won't risk it, you know? And sometimes dogs instinctively do things, even if you love the dog and you love your guinea pig. Do you know what I mean? Not all of them can be kissy-kissy with each other. Do you know what I'm saying? Particularly, obviously, Angel was later in the house. Uh, the terrier didn't know her as a baby because Angel used to live with me. So I, you know, it makes you wonder, yeah, I don't, you know, I wouldn't trust to put the terrier right next to angel like that face to face i wouldn't i love you know my angel too much for that it's no point in risking that you know not well like i said sometimes she she my mum's like oh she doesn't do that when you're not here i'm like well maybe she doesn't but she's doing it now and therefore i'm not letting angel near her she can go back do you know what i mean <laughs> that's you know what i mean that's the way it is but i i think i have angel out a lot more when I'm there than my mum does anyway do you know what I mean my mum has Angel out in the morning when she cleans her out she gives her cuddles then but a lot and obviously when she she's diabetic so she needs to be injected twice a day but um but I usually have her out for longer periods of time on my lap over there so you know yeah you get it Heather that's good yeah so I hope that's gone towards explaining like how I feel romantic myself because I think it's quite unique to get that 
I don't think there's many people that go around feeling this intense romance with themselves and the various places they go to and the things they do. But I just think a lot of the stuff I do, it feels like magical and wonderful for me and makes me feel warm and fuzzy and elated. Do you know what I mean? And I associate that with such positive emotions and feelings. And it's just like, it's like, it's like, you know, when you have a glitter shower, it feels like a glitter shower. It's all beautiful and magical and wonderful. And I love that type of life. I love the glitter shower life. I love, you know, like cute and cuddly, fluffy stuff. I love like if I had my own house, I'd still want to keep some fluffy, cuddly, pretty, sparkly thing to look at. I wouldn't want everything bland and boring because that would just bore me. Do you know what I mean? I don't want to like make sure that I had pictures, selective pictures in certain places that were cute and cuddly. I'd want to make sure there's some cuddly toy strategically positioned around different places so I could look at their beautiful faces I'd want to have like love hearts and sparkly things and do you know what I mean I don't want to lose that essence I think when you lose that essence um it means you're too adult and boring do you know what I mean I don't want to lose that I don't want to lose a child in me I don't want to you know I can't if I don't nourish my inner child it really plays up and causes havoc and it makes me ill I have to literally pay attention to my inner child like no other. You know, like some people are like, oh, well, you've got to like kind of be an adult and control it. But I found the inner child is, <laughs> I have to keep her happy. Once she's happy, everything's happy. The adult and the kids are both happy at the same time. If the inner child in me is not happy, then I get ill. I can't afford to be ill anymore. So I just keep her happy. You know what I mean? So, you know, and I, I just think, you know, if I can be like that now, I just think it's wonderful. A very big contrast to what my life used to be like, you know. I think that's why I appreciate all this type of feeling so much as well, why I love feeling romance, because I I didn't like my life before, you know. When you've hated your life to the point where you didn't want to live anymore, and then you've got it to the exact opposite, a feeling that you want to live this moment forever, feeling so euphoric, so magical, so beautiful, so like, you know, like when I'm out dancing, sometimes I just there and I'm like, in my head, I'm like, just breathe it in, Sandra, just breathe all the atmosphere up, all these energetic, vibrant young people, like um, guys and even the girls are really nice to me, a lot of them lately, you know, that and just feel the vibe, just feel all this energy, excitement that everyone, like when the music speeds up and stuff, people are going, yeah, you know, like really dancing, really getting into the vibe and you know, it's just so much energy. It's so buzzing, you know, and it makes you feel alive. It makes you feel like so euphoric, like, my God, I'm so fortunate and lucky to be alive in this moment. I'm so fortunate to be dancing. I'm so fortunate for this wonderful feeling in my body and my soul and my being. It's so wonderful to be around these young people who are thinking like me to like just enjoy the moment and the music's going and it's putting you on a natural high. It's really like, you know, you've got your own adrenaline rush. You know, you're not taking harmful medical drugs. You're like having your own natural high drug that's just making you feel so wonderful, so gorgeous, so fantastic, you know. That's why I need to go out dancing more, clearly. You know, I love dancing. It's really good for my body. It helps with my fibro. I get to meet young guys there and kiss some occasionally <laughs> or be close to some, um, you know, and I get to like, I practice my confidence skills because you know confidence you know I, I like younger guys I want to get more and more and more confident with younger guys you know I need to keep putting myself in younger environments to understand younger guys better as well I think I understand them quite well because I'm like them but you know I want to understand them better so if, if I'm going to have a future partner I need to be understanding them right now understanding different scenarios so it's, it's really good for like I said confidence building as well when you're in a club you know, and there's hundreds of people there and they're tightly fitted near you as well. You know, you, you have to like trust yourself and, you know, like be comfortable in uncomfortable situations sometimes. And obviously, you know, put in place boundaries where it's necessary as well and needed, you know, but it's just the whole feeling of going dancing is amazing, you know, and it's really, really good for me and my soul. And I just, I just love my life. Do you know what I mean? When I think, you know, like, I try not to think about it, but when I'm doing this video, sometimes I'm like reflecting back at my past, the abuse I experienced, the the, the loneliness, the 
upset, the pain, you know, and all that suicidal thoughts, you know, when I contrast them to how I feel now with myself, oh, thanks for the thumbs up, love you, um, you know, when I contrast that to how it is now for me in my life, when, when I have these moments of pure, like, euphoria and enlightenment and delight and amazingness and wonder, you know, because I've created that for myself by going in these situations, by going to these places, by feeling it, by truly living it. You have to really put your mind into like, oh my gosh, right now I'm experiencing this excitement. I'm experiencing these feelings in my body. And by even, by thinking about it and focusing on it, it makes them bigger because what we focus on expands. So obviously if you focus on negative stuff, you feel more negativity. If you focus on positive stuff and you focus on positive feelings and romantic feelings, the more positive and romantic feelings you focus on, the bigger the romance, the more romance, the more magical and wonderful feelings you feel. So, you know, in order to feel good about yourself and good about your situation, you need to feel loved, you know, by yourself. So I love myself now. I like the way I look. I love my hair. I love my eyes. I love my body because I've trained myself to like my body. I, I didn't like looking at myself. I didn't particularly like looking at myself in the na naked in the mirror. I was okay with it. I didn't hate my body. I've never hated my body, which is good. I've never been a person who actually hates, hates. That was like, you know, I wasn't too keen on my tummy years ago, but you know, like now I really love my body, every curvy bit of it, you know? And so it's really, really important to have a lot of self-love and, and come from a very loving place because you've worked with yourself. You've tried to love yourself. You've tried to talk to yourself. You've tried to see yourself as a, as another you. You know that you being your best friend to yourself. You you have to try and take yourself out of yourself to become by your own best friend. You have to like think if I wasn't me right now and I was looking at an outsider as an outsider at this person I see in the mirror, or you know, would I be friends with her? And what would I love about her? And what would I really like about her? And what why do I like spending time with her? What's so good about her, you know? And when you can answer those questions about yourself and you truly know why you love spending time with yourself and being with yourself, then it makes you feel better. It makes you feel like you really, really are on a level playing field with yourself. Like you are your best friend. Like you are your own soulmate. And so you you really get into a relationship with yourself. And it's the best feeling in the world to be in a relationship with yourself because no one's going to leave you. No one's going to be nasty to you unless you're horrible to yourself. Like self-critical can be horrible. You know, sometimes I am self-critical, but I'm trying to get out of that. Um, sometimes I'm very self-critical. So that is a side that I need to improve on. Um, but, you know, like when you when you really love yourself, then then you allow yourself to have these moments. But you you truly have to be consciously aware of these things. You have to make yourself in your mind think like when I'm at the club, I'm thinking I'm just stopping in my head. I'm still dancing, but in my head, I'm thinking, just stop, slow down and think about the moment you're experiencing now, right now, in this moment. You'll never get this moment back again ever in your life because obviously time's ticking by. It's gone. Once it's gone, it's gone. And when you're in the moment and living it and breathing it and the music's going and you're feeling so happy, so energetic and excited, you just have to take in the moment and you have to feel it and experience in it. And if you're not doing that, you're not experiencing life to the fullest, right? But you have to make yourself consciously aware. Instead of living an unconscious life where you're going around doing stuff, not thinking about what you're actually doing in and internalizing it in a good way, as in focusing on the good stuff, like we focus on the bad stuff a lot in life, sadly. We default to bad stuff like, oh, I'm not doing this right, I'm not doing that right, blah, 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 I'm no good, blah, 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 I'm not enough, blah, 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 and all the rest of it. But when you internalize the good stuff, like, so what am I feeling right now? I'm feeling really good. What the music's going, I'm feeling euphoric. People are having a great time. I'm happy to be around these people. People are all loving life at this moment, in this time, in this room. That is amazing. I love my life too. People are like around me, giving me so much energy. I'm feeling really energetic. I'm jumping up and down. I'm waving my arms around. I'm moving my hips. I'm looking great. I'm feeling good, you know? And when you focus on this stuff, it just feels like an overflowing fountain of love and beauty and light and wonder and magic. And it feels like you're bathing yourself in this. It feels like you're bathing yourself in a Disneyland Paris <laughs> fountain of youth <laughs> and light and wonder and magic. And it, it just feels incredible. 
And the more I experience it, the more I want to. It does get addictive, like, and it, you know, like you're addicted to good feelings and you kind of want more and more of them. But if you can create them for yourself and manifest them for yourself, you can actually get them. That, uh, you know, obviously you've got to be able to deal with some normal stuff in life as well. But, you know, it's just an incredible feeling. So you can be romantic over other people, but you can also be romantic with yourself. And that is what it feels like for me to be romantic with myself. And I hope you found this video very useful, helpful, insightful. If you have in any way, shape or form, please give it a thumbs up. Lots of love to the people who've already given it a thumbs up. I am going to go now. Thank you so much. If you've got any comments, queries or questions in the meantime, after this video, please pop them down below. I'd love to know what your thoughts are. I'd love to know what your feelings are. If you want it, got any more questions about how you feel romance for yourself or other people, what it feels like, please pop them down below. And I endeavour to either answer them in the comments or in another video for you. Um, if you haven't already subscribed, please hit the great subscribe button right below, right here, right now. Please hit that bell icon to get notified of every time I go live right now or post a new video. And until next time, embrace your quirky and each other's, I'll give my love to Ray and my love to Heather. Thank you so much for partaking. You, Heather, and Ray have been amazing. Oh, and Brain, thank you so much. And Stevie the cat. Mwah! Meow! Love you all dearly. It's been a pleasure and amazing. I could just go on forever and ever about the amazing feeling I feel. And the more I go on about it, the more amazing I feel. So I could be here on here for another three hours, I'm sure. But I'm going to love you and leave you for tonight. And wish you a beautiful day wherever you are. And I love and adore you to bits. Thank you so much for being here. Night. Night, Ray. Night, Heather. Night, everyone. Lots of love. Good morning. Good day. Wherever you are, have a beautiful day. Love you lots. Bye.